I will call the meeting to order at 6.45. Shauna's here as our minute taker. And maybe before we go to public comment, I just think since this is the first convening of this new look MAUSD board, we should do some introductions around the table. So if you can state your name and which town you're representing here, that would be great. Hi, Rebecca Odie Lincoln. Allison Sturdivant, Bristol. Liz Sayre, Bristol. Sarah LaPerol, New Haven. Kevin Hansen, Bristol. Andrew Morton, New Haven. Sarah McLean, Lincoln. Caleb Alders, Darksboro. Jen Stanley, Moncton. Krista Seringo, Bristol. Donna Bristol, Moncton. Great. Oh, and has everybody taken their oath no. No, prior to tonight? This thing. I have like the oath. Yes. Documentation. That thing. It's yeah. signed and all that. It is. Wonderful. Yes. Can you just raise your hand if you haven't taken the oath so we can make sure? Only last. I mean, no. if you got reelected, you need to take it. I believe if you got reelected, you need to take it, yes. Or well, if you got appointed. Yes. I think yes. if you got appointed and you have to take it, you have to take it as well. Yeah. Okay. Do we want to take a minute for you to do that now, Don, and then everybody can participate? Yeah. And we have paperwork. I'll distribute this. They can start putting it out. Well, okay, you can help yeah. Some paper for you to get the pens. Yeah. Yeah. to urge this board to take action on the uh, community advisory councils that were enabled by the Articles of Association uh, of this board. Um, I feel strongly that these groups hope can, can help this board in its work and help give a, a larger footprint to 
the, uh, the board and the management of the district um, in a way that will not complicate Patrick's life too much and will not diminish your authority. But I think uh, we need to do it um, certainly soon because I think uh, June is when it's supposed to be done by June. Is that the? I don't think there's a necessarily a timeline to that. So this board just needed to take action by June, I guess, was the, not even. Nope. I thought there was mention of. Consider. Yeah. The, the charge in the Articles of Agreement for Act 46 would to consider um, advisory councils. Okay. Well, I think the sooner the better to help get it uh, in place so that we can make it happen. Thanks. Any other public comment? All right, hearing none, we're going to move on to uh, first action item, which is board reorganization. We have the oath of office done. That's great. And now we need to elect officers. So I'm going to see this process through until you've elected the chair. At that point, I'll turn the meeting over to the chair. So this time, I will accept nominations for chair. And nominations don't need to be seconded. So we'll just take any of those nominations from the board. I move to nominate Don Griswold for chair. Other nominations? Hearing none, do you, do you accept that nomination? Yes. Okay. Uh, so hearing no others then, uh, we'll close nominations. So send a vote. All those in favor of Don as your chair, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? You elect to Don as your chair. It's all yours. Thank you. All right, so our next uh, task is to, uh, to uh, elect a, a vice chair. Are there nominations for a vice chair? Our vice chair last year was Jen. <laughs> so I nominate Jen Stanley. You should accept that nomination. Are there any other nominations? All right. All those in favor of Jen Stanley as our vice chair, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. All right. And a clerk. Allison, were you our clerk last year? Who's our clerk? Caleb. Maybe you were. Was there a clerk last year? You might have been our clerk. I'm the year. clerk for Starksboro. I didn't think I was the clerk last year, but usually you don't have to take a minute to be the clerk at this meeting, so it might have escaped my attention. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to serve in that role. I didn't think I was. Self self nomination is always welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb is happy to be the clerk. And there, is there anyone else who would like to make a nomination? All right. All those in favor of Caleb as our clerk, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Great. Um, next item for our list is to appoint a representative to the Policy and Governance Committee. And I think that that's an interesting, uh, it's an item that we probably should appoint to, but it's likely that they won't serve because the Policy and Governance Committee has completed their work. Um, as you can see in an update that was in that's later on in the agenda. I'm not seeing it right now. But um, the policy and governance were, had a charge that was uh, designed by the executive committee. And the, the part about that is when they complete their work that is outlined in the charge, they're really done. So, but they're, um, so they, they've done the work they need to do and they don't think they're going to be meeting again unless um, the executive committee calls for some policy language change, in which case they'd be called back into action because that was one of the charges. Um, currently, I think I was a representative to the policy and governance. Allison and Liz were the three representatives <coughs> to the policy and governance. So we're going to need to appoint representatives, but we might not do anything unless they did. Jen? I make 
make a motion to appoint Don, Allison, and Liz to the Policy and Governance Committee. Second. favor of Allison, Liz, and myself as your representatives to the Policy and Governance Committee, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Next, we need to appoint representatives to the Negotiations Committee. Um, so, I serve in the past as your representative to that committee, along with Allison and Chris, Krista, yes, the three of us serve. Not necessarily for this board. I think I was the ENES. Well, when we had to, as the as we progressed and we had to have um, some voice from the this new board, then we became that voice as well, and we were oh, appointed. Yeah. yeah, because we were already serving. So. background of what the negotiations committee does so they prepare for um, when the contract is uh, just prior to the contract expiring they're preparing to work to, to meet to begin negotiations uh, over the contract so um, uh, last year we tried a new process so the uh, members of the <coughs> negotiations committee did some training prior to the meeting about a new process that we use to go into negotiations this year. So uh, the three of us attended the meeting as well as some other members who sat on the local boards and um, we uh, worked through the process with the federal mediators. I wonder if we, if we have a number that we want on this to serve on this committee and, and if we might consider having someone who hasn't served in addition or or perhaps in lieu of someone else because of that knowledge and training that we want to continue um, so while the three of us have been in that process and are really familiar with it we don't want it to just live with the three of us I'm not under the impression that the negotiations committee is actively doing any work right now. Like I think that this board is going to need to form something under this board when negotiations need to happen again, right? We probably need to reconsider what that structure would look like when right. that time comes. Currently there are regional bargaining meetings that happen in Addison County and we'll need a representative to, to attend that meeting because right now the a member of the local boards attends as our representative. So we're going to need a representative to attend the regional bargaining meeting just to keep up to date on the information. The same, um, the same thing could happen if the board begins to prepare to to re-educate themselves on some something that's in you know become you know like the state has said okay we're going to look at this this year with contract negotiations. And then there may be members who. Needed, who are going to be needed to go and get educated on a particular subject or something rather than, hey, the contract ends in so many months and we're going to start. And so at least for the re regional bargaining, we're going to need a representative. So, Jen. So I guess for me anyway, in the context of what you described, it makes sense that the same representatives would continue to serve until such time that we figure out what that new structure would look like. So as long as no one is going to give me the evil eye, I'll make a motion to appoint Don and Krista and Allison to the negotiations committee. Rebecca. Don, for the, if there was a new person, when are the trainings available for them to be able to do the, the same type of education? Because that may play a role into when you want someone to be available. I don't mind three you know, old hands being the ones that are in it right now. I'm just thinking, for example, if Sarah was interested and we know that there's going to be trainings offered throughout, we don't want to have to train them right when negotiations start up because that was a lot of time for you guys. Yeah. Um, I think that training was specifically, I mean, we for you, right. for us okay. kind of thing. So we'd have to either. I guess we'd have to decide if we're going to go with that model again. Right. 
And if so, then reach out to the mediator to see if we can arrange those trainings. But maybe we could do that sooner rather than later. Well, it's a, it's an, we're, we're one side of the decision. It's a two sided okay. decision. So we can't commence that until, right. until the bargaining commences. Right. Gotcha. I wouldn't think you could. Yeah. So then it wouldn't really matter then to have a new person on if we don't even know what we're going to train them in. Uh, yeah, because we don't know how what model is going to be used at this. Okay, point. fair enough. I just wanted to check in case we can get ahead of the ahead of the training bus. <laughs> That's a good idea. It does That's seem like a larger conversation by this yes. board about bargaining and what that's going to look like will be really important. Yeah. But am I understanding that that's a conversation we have with the representatives I, from I think the it's staff? A, definitely. The teachers. Okay. Yeah, I think it's important um, for the representatives of this board to the bargaining committee to know what this board's interests are in terms of the way they want to bargain uh, so that they can represent you properly. Um, but really that conversation about what the decision is in terms of the method for bargaining is something that's done as part of Enjoy the process. Decision. All right. So no further questions. All those in favor of appointing Allison, Krista, and myself to the, as representatives to the negotiations committee can say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. All right, and that brings <coughs> us down to the last, uh, our, to a point of representative to the Community Engagement Committee. And currently, that's Caleb and Jen and Andrew. Andrew. And, and Megan. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so there were four, but Megan's no longer on the board, so. Um, and four was a, a, a a small enough number that you could meet and get some work done without, um, you know, trying to juggle too many schedules to, to make it right. Happen. And big enough that two and up, two of us could speak without forming a quorum. Right. So I think four would be good. Okay. I'm happy to continue. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Andrew. <laughs> Anyone else want to? Unless someone really wants to. <laughs> I would be interested, uh, but I don't want to take an opportunity from other folks that might be. But I'm, I'm interested in this piece of our work. Um, but so. But so. <laughs> so yeah, I, yeah, I am too interested in that very much. So even if it means being on the actual group that's talking about the plan, but everybody is going to be engaged, is my understanding, in the actual decisions about what we do to engage our community, right? Yeah, I guess this is something that seems like a really critical piece of our work, especially now. And so, you know, maybe you guys are the vehicle, but we're all really I mean, for my part, I don't, I don't, I don't see that five is too big a group, uh -huh. in my personal opinion. I think that it is really critical work that we're doing right now, and, and uh, sometimes it's harder to get a group of five together, knowing that you're always maybe going to have four there is a good thing, um, and in a lot of ways, just for sort of moving the conversation ahead, so. And there are going to be opportunities. I mean, really, this board is going to, everyone, everyone's going to have to take on a task at some point through our work as we get closer and closer to our first day, um, you know, getting things organized. So as we progress through these next couple of meetings, there's going to be more and more jobs for people to take on. Jen? So can I nominate myself, Caleb, Andrew, Liz, and Krista to be members of the Community Engagement Committee? Any other nominations <laughs> appointments? <laughs> Can you repeat that just so I make sure I have so, everybody? You, yeah, <laughs> Jen, Caleb, Andrew, Liz, and Krista. Okay. All right. And since it's an appointment, I think we do need a second on an appointment. So is there a second? <coughs> I'll start Steve? All right, Steve. I'm second the other one, sir. I think, I think there will. 
I think we did. Okay. <coughs> all right, so all those in favor of appointing Jen, Caleb, Andrew, Krista, and Liz to as representatives to the Community Engagement Committee, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Who seconded that? Uh, Steve. Steve Rooney. Okay. All right. Um, next item on the agenda is an executive session. Um, we are in need of an executive session. Uh, it'll be a brief one, and it's required under Title I, BSA 313A3. Uh, specifically the appointment or employment or evaluation of an employee. Um, there will be no action taken in the executive session. The action will come for a, later on in the meeting as listed on the agenda, but um, in order to provide some information, we're gonna need an executive session, which will involve some employment records that are not public records, so we will need an executive session. And um, we'll ask Patrick to come in. Uh, when we take the motion, so, Jen. I will move to go into executive session for evaluation of an employee and invite uh, Superintendent Rain to join. Okay. Is there a second? I second. Andrew, seconds. All right, all those in favor of going into executive session at 7.07? Excuse me, I, I apologize for interrupting. Um, I'm new to this process, so I, uh, I'm not sure if there's second chances for public comment before you there, go in? Not not at this point there isn't, okay. and, um, but there is later in the meeting at 820. Okay, I'll wait until then. Okay, great, thank you. All right, all those in favor of going into executive <laughs> session, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Okay, so if everyone else that was not invited could step out of the room for a few minutes, um, um, and we'll just open the door when we're done. And I'm good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to get ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, we wanted to reach back out to you for public comment now, if you'd oh, like to give some. Okay. Um, my name is Julie Clark. I am a teacher at the Bristol Elementary School. Uh, excuse me. I'm an educational assistant at the Bristol Elementary School, and I'm also a resident in Bristol. Um, and I hope that you'll consider accepting um, Bridget Nardiello's appeal to take a year um, away from our school. We would be sad to, to miss her for that long, but um, the diversity of experience that she could bring back to our school, I think, would be invaluable. And um, showing the support for her proposal, I think, would really um, send a message about what we value as a community, and that's family and, and children. Why she wants to go. I think I'm going to stand up because I think I only have one shot at this, right? Go, go. Okay, I'm Bridget Nardiello. This is my son, Francis. And uh, I guess when I look down and I see accept superintendent's recommendation to deny, I just wonder. I, I obviously don't know the process, uh, but. Um, the big picture, the long view. If I can go somewhere and gain perspective and look at systems and immerse myself in a different in educational environment and come back and have that to offer to my colleagues and my students, most importantly. That feels like something that's significant, that's an offering. And I know that a, a precedent has been set to a certain degree. There's been teachers, my daughter had, uh, in her senior year here at Mount Ape, a guidance counselor got to walk the long trail, so he got a, a year's leave to do that. Another colleague uh, at Lincoln got to go ride her bike in different countries, and I'm not exactly sure the details of that, but I know that piece. And then my colleague last year got to a year to write a book or work on a book. I don't even know if it was a children's book or not. I don't know what the 
bring back was to the district. Uh, but I know what mine would be. Uh, and more importantly, this guy's homegrown. He was born and raised right here in Bristol. And uh, I have an opportunity to support his dream. And it's a big, fat dream. And I'd like to think that we are a community of people who would be on board for that. I've committed 21 years uh, to children in Addison County and Chipman South. And I very seldomly ask for something. I have a couple friends that I adore. And so I'm asking, because he's the most important thing. I'm sure I've forgotten something that I've written down. But, um, oh, my building principal supports this choice. That's important, I think, to mention. Uh, and I don't know, I guess I'm not totally clear on Mr. Reen's conflict with this. Uh, and I, I think it's an opportunity possibly for somebody to come into my space who might be losing their job and it would be a win-win. Uh, yeah, that's the best I got. I have spoken. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone, have, excuse me, anyone else? One thing I do know, and I, I honestly, I don't, I don't really know the logistics of the situation in any means, uh, but uh, from what I've came to the understanding is uh, you guys have an opportunity to potentially change the trajectory of my life. Um, and I know that I'm just one kid who uh, grew up in this community and um, uh, loved every minute of it and loved this community very much. Um, and I think that, you know, if it, there's a way where it could also help someone else in the district or the you know, school to have an opportunity to take my mother's uh, room to be here while she helped me achieve my dreams and perhaps gain some sort of knowledge and uh, skills to bring back to the school board. I think that I could be a win-win situation for uh, the community. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't, I don't have much more to say, but thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, my name is Andrea Murnay. I also teach at Bristol. I'm a 5-6 teacher currently. Um, I've been there 15 years. I've been working with Bridget for a really long time. Um, I think the thing for me, and you've heard all of the <clears throat> great reasoning so far, I think for me, as someone who works side by side to her, is that I think it's really important to think about who we are and what we stand for as a school. and. We always are looking at what's best for kids and what's best for them educationally and trying to teach them how to use their brains and follow their heads, but also follow their hearts. And I think it would be a really great message for you all to send that when someone's given 20 years of their life to a school, um, and you all know what it's like to be a teacher, or I'm hoping you all know what it's like to be a teacher, it goes way beyond the regular you know, 745 to 315 that you would send a message to people letting them know that you value them as people as well as educators in your district. And I, I think she's an incredible educator and she's also an incredible human being. And an incredible mom. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I think that's all I have to say. Um, I think that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to move us back into the agenda, and our next item is the consent agenda. I'm going to make a motion to pull um, item B from the consent agenda and continue to vote on A, C, D, and E. Is there a second? Caleb? Would you get that, Sarah and Caleb, on that motion? And it's to pull item B and approve A, C, D, and E. All those in favor of pulling B for discussion and approving A, C, D, and E in the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? 
Okay, that takes care of the consent agenda. Now on to our discussion item. Jen? So I'll make a motion that we accept the superintendent's recommendation to deny the leave of absence. Is there a second? No, sir. Steve? Is there any discussion? Rebecca? I would like to note um, on behalf of the board that we just previously had an executive session um, and had extensive discussion regarding this proposal. Um, and it is a very difficult discussion. And I don't think that anyone um, took it lightly and that we understand that there's a lot going on here that we wanted to address and really fully flesh out. After doing that, um, it's still an incredibly difficult decision and uh, one that one that we have to make as a board. And we just wanted to make sure that our board minutes and the public sitting here understands that we did delve deeply into this and, and consider it a great length, even though we had to do it in executive session because of the personal nature of it being an employee. Anything I missed? Any other discussion? Okay, it's time to vote. All those in favor of accepting the superintendent's recommendation to deny the leave, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Aye. No. Any abstentions? I believe the ayes have it. Can we have a count? Sure. So would all who, uh, voted in favor of accepting the superintendent's recommendation to deny the leave, please raise your hand. Two, three, five, six. All those who voted nay. One, two, three, four, five. Six to five. Moving on to executive limitations monitoring. Included in the packet was a uh, monitoring report for 2.4 financial planning and building. <clears throat> Remember, we're still kind of in the practice mode for these monitoring reports, even though in a couple of months we're going to take them on as our task. Uh, the executive committee and the meeting prior to this did accept this monitoring report. So just at this point continuing to go through the motions until we own them ourselves. Jen. I, I have one question. Do you want me to make a motion first? That would be great. So I move to accept the monitoring report. All right. Is there a second? I second. Andrew, second. All right. Any discussion? Jen. So I, and I apologize because I'm sure we saw this before, but the monitoring report noted that the audit report was still expected, but I know at least on the local boards we had received our audit report. So I was just curious, are we still waiting for the audit report for the SU? I could be in error. Error, do we have all the monitoring reports? Yeah, they're all, they're all audits. They're audits, sorry. Okay. It could just be an error. Oh, uh, it so, could also be that I wrote this draft a month and a half ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't, I don't have today. a concern about approving the monitoring report. It was more just wondering if there were still audit reports that we were waiting on, because it was my impression. I knew that I had yes. seen the Moncton one, so I assumed they were all in. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Just as a process note, um, when we accept a monitoring report from the superintendent, um, we have a, an official board of education <coughs> response form. So we have to, two questions that we need to answer. And is it, one is based on the information provided, does the board find that the superintendent interpretation is reasonable, is the first one. And the second one is, um, does the board find that the data demonstrates the accomplishment of this interpretation? Yes, sir. and the answers could be yes or no. 
So that's, I don't think that we have talked about it. this form gets filled out every time we have a monitoring report. So and that's being done by the EC right now? Right. The EC is, does that. Um, the local boards give comment through the process, and um, everybody's heard about the interpretations as they've been developed, so, right. so it's been back and forth several times with, with some of the policies. Is it, is it fair to acknowledge that we'll talk a lot more about the policy governance process and the monitoring reports at future meetings? Absolutely. <laughs> There's a new board member. <laughs> uh, maybe at the next meeting, even. <laughs> all right. All those in favor of accepting the monitoring report for 2.4 financial planning and budgeting, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, next item, at action item is to accept the monitoring report for 2.8, communication and support to the board. I make a motion we accept the, the uh, All right. monitoring so, report. Steve made the motion, is there a second? Andrew? Okay, any discussion, questions? All those in favor of accepting the monitoring report for 2.8 communication and support to the board, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Next um, three items. I don't know if you want to lump them together, but to, maybe to explain. The uh, next three items are uh, to approve a memorandum of understanding. Um, it's an agreement that has been reached with the superintendent and the union to take some action that is outside the contract language. Um, it does not set a precedent, and um, it's just a simple agreement between us and, and the union about how we're going to take action on some things. And it, it's effectively binding until the next round of negotiations, unless the MOU is for a particular year, but usually they're for the length of the contract. So I'll talk about each of them briefly. The, the first one is the MOU for RIF by school, recall rights by SD. So effectively what that is, so we're in a year of transition. So we have a two-year contract, this year and next year. This year, we're under the current district definition of each school is its own district, and then you have ANESU that's a district. Next year, the definition of district is MAUSD, it's one. So we're making decisions in the contract year, which has multiple districts for the contract year that has a single district. So we're in sort of a strange place. In talking about the changes that we had to make, knowing there were reductions that had to be made, we had to sort of work together to understand how we enact that. And so what we agreed to was um, the reductions in force would happen based on seniority lists by each school. That's how the contract currently reads. However, in terms of recalling folks that were reduced in one place to enable them to take a position in a different school, we wanted those recall rights to apply across all schools, um, which would be against what the contract says is allowable for this year. Um, so this MOU basically acknowledges that we agree that that's the appropriate way to go. RIF by individual school seniority, recall by single seniority across the district. The next one is approve an MOU for displacement rights to include coaches, interventionists, and coordinators. So we've had some of these folks um, in the past. The <coughs> contract language doesn't really acknowledge um, those positions by category. So this is just to say, especially as we're going to have more coaches, coordinators, uh, and interventionists, let's recognize that we don't want to um, disincentivize people for taking those positions. So if you're a really great English teacher at the high school and you want to be a literacy coach, um, we don't want you to have to forego your seniority within the English department um, doing that work to help everyone else who teaches English teach English better. Um, so if there's a reduction in, in an English or a literacy coach, that person in their time as, as literacy coach would um, continue to build seniority within the English department. So this just acknowledges that, so that we're enabling people um, who are great teachers to possibly become great coaches and not have to give something up to do that. 
Does that happen in other areas? I think this is the only place where there was some question as to whether or not it worked that way. I think everywhere else it's really clean. Um, you know, a special educator who, because special education was consolidated a few years back, a special educator who works at Beeman who gets moved to Bristol doesn't lose any seniority because uh, they're staying within the same contract category. Um, and because special educators are specifically recognized. It's not so clear in terms of the coach and the coordinator and interventionist because it just makes it clear um, that they're not giving something up to take this work on. Patrick, the, the first action uh, is only for this contract, right? Because, right. but the second one will. And it's really only for this year of the contract. Right. So the, and then, this, but the second one is going to be a side. So that. It would probably lead into conversations as we negotiate next time, and we might include some language to be clear about those positions. Technically, this, this MOU only exists for the duration of this contract, but it will inform negotiations moving forward. Sir, um, I don't know if this has to do with this exact piece, but when you do hiring or a recall, are more people involved in that position at this point than just that original building? So right now, so that's what this MOU enables is that as we recall, now if, if there's a position, if there, let's, so we talked about classroom teachers. If there were a classroom teacher who were rift from Beeman mm -hmm. and an opening came up at Moncton, we could recall that person from Beeman to Moncton. They don't have to apply. They don't have to go through the process that they otherwise would. If we didn't have the recall by single seniority list across the district, technically we would riff at Beeman, have an opening at Moncton that we would have to post and the person at Beeman would have to apply for and may or may not get. So I thought I heard you ask a second part of your question though, like because I know we had a lot of conversation about this at the Act 46 committee. So when you're hiring new people, is that hiring process now bigger than one building since there will be rights now throughout the district. So when, so we're hiring for, uh, and this is part of the work we're doing with the contracts now, trying to be really clear, you're an MAUSD employee for next year, whether you're a new hire or even someone who's currently employed and will continue to be employed. You're an employee of MAUSD. Um, your contract category is what we're bound to. Your location and your assignment are subject to change. Mm -hmm. So if we're hiring as a K-6 classroom teacher, that's the sort of the category in the contract where bumping rights apply. So you're locked into that. We can't change that without going through a process. Your assignment to teach third grade at Bristol could change. It could be fifth grade at Bristol. It could be third grade at Beeman because you're an SD employee. So. We, we have that sort of ability to move staff around. So we're trying to make that really clear in the contract um, for new hires as well as current ones. Do we need a motion? Yes. I, but I have one more. Mm -hmm. The last one. So uh, the, the last one is to approve an MLU for a lump sum payment in June. Currently, this school year, so the 17-18 school year, historically, um, the contract says we pay employees in 26 installments. The first installment is at the start of the school year, so late August. And then it's 26 pay periods, which takes them through the summer, just up to the start of the next school year. We're in a situation this year with a transition. Um, a and ESU doesn't have the ability to pay people in July and August because they don't exist. <laughs> MAUSD can't pay people in July and August for work they did June and earlier. <laughs> so we have to really part ways and, and have sort of a clean break at the end of June as we make the transition from a and ESU or Bristol or New Haven or whatever it is to MAUSD. 
So instead of the summer payments, this would make one payment at the end of June, that is their June payment that they would normally get, and their four-ish summer payments that they would get. Uh, some concern came up about will they lose more in taxes doing it that way, and we confirm the answer to that is no. Uh, so with that concern satisfied, the union agreed um, to do this, which is good. Because we're not aware of any alternatives to doing this. <laughs> <laughs> that was Andy. Common practice, this is what happens in my district. That's what happens. Everybody yes. just gets Every year of my entire yeah. career. Yeah. 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 And that practice varies across the state. No brainer. Now we have a motion. Yes, we can. You can do it single. Rebecca. <laughs> I move to approve C, D, and E for the MOUs just discussed by Patrick Green. Would you add things that authorize the chair to sign? And authorize the chair to sign, of course, for all three of those MOUs. Is there a second? I'll second. Jen. All right. Any further questions, comments? Now is your chance. All those in favor of approving the item C, D, and E, the Memorandum of Understanding, as explained by Patrick, and authorizing the chair to sign, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Okay. All right. Now we'll move down to Board Management and Governance, C3 and C4. Um, an action is to adopt a gun-related violence prevention resolution, and included in the packet was the <coughs> Madison Central School District uh, resolution for a reference. So this is an opportunity to have a discussion, and if you so are so inclined to uh, adopt a resolution, Rebecca. So I don't know how much everybody is aware of the legislation that's going on right now, but it greatly impacts my actual job. Uh, because I handle all of the intimate domestic violence crimes in Addison County for juveniles and adults, um, and all the sex assault crimes that occur here. That's my entire caseload. And with that, uh, many of these particular gun legislation pieces have an impact on how the officers do their job and what we're allowed to do when these people come to court. And so I would just say if you're not familiar with them, I'd recommend reading them. The um, state's attorneys, the defender generals, people like that are going to Montpelier right now to talk about these things. They're doing the actual work right now. So if you have input or thoughts or you don't understand and you want to understand more about it, we do have domestic violence problems in Addison County. They are significant. They do impact, to my understanding, all of our five towns. Um, I know far too much about it. And unfortunately, we have a lot of issues with guns um, not necessarily always being in the commission of the actual Domestic Violence Act, but being in the homes and not always even being owned by the person who's committing the domestic violence. But it, do it does raise a wide variety of issues. Um, and it needs to be a well thought out process uh, because we do face a lot of violence and it gets impacted most of what I see the impact mainly being on is a cycle of intergenerational violence uh, that the children witness, get exposed to, sometimes often have horrific ramifications and then we literally see them grow up in our DCF or juvenile system and then they go into adult court and continue on this cycle. Um, and a lot of it involves access to weapons. Um, we do, <clears throat> a lot of people think that once you get a domestic violence um, conviction that you're Brady disqualified, if you know what that means, you're not allowed to have weapons. It doesn't include some things like muzzle loaders. So they can still have like muzzle loader, whatever those are, the, the ones you can have muzzle loader, honey, I'm not a hunter. Um, but more importantly, we have limited abilities right now to enforce some of these things. So even though we have the ATF, uh, they are limited in their financial capabilities to go out and find people that violate their Brady disqualification unless they commit a new crime or a significant danger or threat to somebody. So I just say it's really important. I highly recommend we look at it and think about how it impacts our communities. Um, 
these weapons in these homes are likely the ones that kids would have access to to bring uh, easily with them or to have access to it in their homes, which involves safety of our schools and of the kids transitioning to and from them and in our communities. So it's a big deal. Kristen. Do you know, Rebecca, if, um, as from what I saw, that H422 is the house legislation around removing guns from the scene of a domestic violence crime, but the, the legislation that's moving forward now that got preliminary approval is, is the Senate Bill 55. Do you know if that domestic violence provision is in that Senate bill? Because I didn't see that, so, but I don't, I wasn't sure. It's really funny. So I haven't been involved in the actual conversations in Montpelier. My boss, um, state's attorney, was there instead for Addison County, uh, Dennis Wigman. And so he came back actually this morning and was talking to me about what he expects some of the laws to look like, but I don't think they're completely, it wasn't clear to me that they've been completely hashed out in terms of language. Um, and so although we have an idea of what we might be looking to expect, I can't say with certainty how much of that first bill is included or not included in the second one right now. So I would just add that I asked um, Don and Patrick if we could put this on our agenda because I had seen that Addison Central um, made this resolution and then I guess more recently um, the Brattleboro School Board did the same. And I don't know a whole lot about um, what our process would be if we wanted to adopt some sort of resolution, but I just wanted to be sure we had the conversation because I think it's a really important timely one. So. Um, you know, first to honor that this should be a conversation, um, and then if we decide it's important to figure out, um, you know, the letter from Madison Central is dated in February, and since then obviously a lot has, has been moving forward, so I think if we were in favor of making some sort of statement, it would seem like we would want to support that action and perhaps encourage other action that might not be on the table based on our thoughts or, um, or just leave it at supporting what, what our representatives are doing. Um, and I'm very much in favor of doing whatever we can to prevent gun-related violence in our schools, so this is just a teeny tiny little, mm -hmm. really, statement, but I think it's still an important one to make because the safety of kids is our primary objective. And this is one very teeny tiny thing we should do, so. Okay. My understanding is, you know, this, this refers to four pieces of legislation. My understanding is that H-422 is um, now being looked at at a Senate committee and vice versa with S-221. They're both related bills that I think are kind of red flag bills. Um, so I think that those two are still active and are um, going through, I believe, 876, H876, and S6 have effectively been moved into S55 as provisions, and S55 was the comprehensive bill that was actually repassed this morning with amendments. So things are moving quickly, yeah. and um, so I think to get really granular uh, references to those bills is, is um, difficult to, to stay totally current in something yeah. like this with the resolution. So I just might suggest that I think that um, a lot of the whereases in this resolution are are more um, uh, are, are less are, are less movable than the actual legislation itself, which is moving quickly and is complex and which is shifting and consolidating different parts of these um, bills. I, I guess that would be my point to maybe the paragraph specifically relating to those um, is not as important to include, I would maybe put forward, just because I think this is, um, feels like a resolution that's, that, that is trying to express support for a process that addresses this, <coughs> this problem. And, and that uh, it seems to me that the, you know, kind of has, there's a, at the end of this sort of, um, just urges the drafting and passage of legislation previous sessions, but also says similar bills uh, at the end of that one sentence. And I think that 
there could be some removal of the specifics um, if you wanted to consider that. Allison. So are we looking to act on a specific <coughs> resolution tonight, or are we looking to start drafting our own resolution? Are we looking to make a broad blanket statement? Put on the agenda is that at, to have the discussion at the board table so we can determine a path if we're taking a path. Mm -hmm. So this for the uh, for me, I would like to see things happen that support safety of the safety of our community and our children. For me, if we are going to make a statement, I would really like it to include encouragement up around, I haven't thought it through, but mental health related, because for me, that almost feels more powerful in, from my perspective. So if we were gonna draft something, I would like it to go perhaps beyond, uh, beyond just the gun legislation, gun related legislation. Um, just give me that um, the S two two one. I mean, it's still related to guns, but um, it does. It's kind of speak to. I don't know if this specific uh, if Vermont's um, proposal addresses this, but it's basically been called the red flag legislation, and it's been approved in five other states and. Basically, it's family members or people in the community that see somebody that might be a danger to the community that they, you know, they can appeal to the court to remove firearms from that person's Temporary. possession. Yep. Yeah. Temporarily. Yep. Temporarily, but up to a year. Yep. Yeah. yeah. The the the. Uh, Kevin. <laughs> The, the mental health and attitude thing is very, very important. And I don't know if it falls into this because this is, this is more um, retroactive or, or reactive, the legislation that's going on right now. But I think um, Liz has an excellent point that there's, there is, there's a um, very important aspect of, of um, you know, the, the mindset, the, mis the stability of, of individuals as well that needs to be addressed. Okay. Um, just to highlight what Sarah said, that bill, the red flag bill, does really, that is the purpose of it, is to take into account those types of instances where you're looking at behavioral or mental health issues because uh, when you get into a criminal type of proceeding, the problem we have is that uh, just having like a general anxiety disorder or depression does not qualify you for the same type of maybe mental health related services that you would imagine or make you not be able to have weapons like you would imagine. And so I think it's just important if we do craft words around mental health that we are aware of what we're crafting versus like what language we use for schools versus what language we use when we're talking about guns and what we can and can't do with them if that makes sense. because. People are often surprised by what what standards we have and what mental health here in Vermont can actually do and when they can and can't step in uh, right now because of those differences. And my wife was passing around a letter that the Department of Mental Health distributed to her district on that exact issue that <laughs> using the words mental health or mental issue mental illness doesn't exactly pinpoint what's going on these folks don't necessarily have any um, they're, they're more maladaptive than they are mentally ill and that comes from a bunch of different directions it doesn't just necessarily come from uh, a disease you might have in your head it comes from societal factors that spread all across the spectrum so how you talk about it does need to address all those supports that are missing from the people's lives, not just their mental health. Andrew? Uh, so a couple of thoughts on the mental health stuff. You know, I've been a therapist for 10 years and worked on the crisis team at the ER and have been voluntarily hospitalized people. So this is a subject that's near and dear to me, but I've been pretty angry at 
to hear that, that it's been used as a talking point among the GOP and the NRA as a way of obfuscating the gun violence issue. It's sort of positioned as that we need to expand mental health treatment and uh, the availability. Uh, Vermont's 90th percentile for uh, mental health provider ratio to uh, population. We're 241, 240 people to every mental health provider in the state. Um, San Francisco is the most saturated, it's 150 to one. Uh, there's parts of Mississippi that are 25,000 to one. So we have a ton of mental health providers here. So I think when we talk about it, we have to be careful to say that um, there is not really a huge access issue. We have some problems in our system, especially around involuntary hospitalizations and folks getting queued up in the ER beds. But we have lots of mental health treatment available for people who need it. The fact is that a lot of these folks who go into schools with AR-15s never ask, ask for treatment. You know, No one's ever showed up in my office and said, I th I'm thinking about shooting. Uh, folks up in the school, but I thought I'd stop by and ask you first <laughs> and see if you can help me out with that. So. Well, what was the term you used? Well, I know one point they made in the letter was that most of the people that are actually qualified under the mental health or mental illness category, um, there's like one or two percent of those people across the country that actually commit violent acts. They're usually the victims of violent acts. Mm -hmm. So. Rebecca? So that's what I was going to say too, is that we actually don't find that even with mass shootings that most of those people qualify under having a mental illness that would be the basis for like the reason why they committed it. Right. And even in my court with, um, you know, how we may think that like most sex assaults or domestic violence must be related to some type of mental defect, they may have um, diagnosis of anxiety or, um, I forget what they're called, but something related to opioids or alcohol issues or things like that, but it doesn't make them not competent to stand trial. It doesn't make them insane at the time that they committed the act. Those are things we look at when we're looking for mental health evaluations for the court's perspective. And it doesn't mean that they have something like bipolar or schizophrenia that can be regulated with medication or that can be treated in a way that's meaningful to prevent it. It doesn't mean they don't need other assistance like we were saying about substance abuse or counseling or, or services, but we, we do have those, and they are readily provided when people are in crises here. Jim? So <coughs> I guess my, my question to this board is, you know, what, what are we hoping to accomplish with this discussion? Because I, and it sounds like some of you are a lot more knowledgeable about some aspects of this than I am, but to me, you know, we're here as a board because we're thinking about the safety of the children in these schools and maybe a little bit about the safety of the children that go to our schools even when they're not at the school. But so to me, I think that the goal of this um, letter that the Addison Central did was to try to support the process that was happening by the people who know a whole lot more about it than I do. Um, and so I, if we do want to go forward with something, you know, I, I kind of agree with what you said a long time ago, Caleb, like it's all the whereas stuff. I mean, I could do without the wording of all the whereases, but you know, that, like, that sentiment of there's all this stuff going on and it's time to do something about it, and then sort of putting our voice behind that, that's where I see it would be appropriate for this board to do something if we wanted. I think debating, you know, whether we want to call it mental illness or, you know, like we could spend a lot of time on that and I'm not sure that we have the right knowledge to get to, you know, to get to the answer on that. Kristen. Yeah, I would, I would echo that and think that um, there is a role for school boards to do this kind of legislative push now and again or support for or against things. I think you know, as we hear different plans from the governor about where to put money or where to not put money, I think as a board we can have discussions about would we want to make a statement in support or against some of those things. So I think this falls into that category. Um, and if and if this group agrees, um, I would be happy to tweak this, maybe based on some of the conversation and particularly Caleb's suggestions and bring it to the group again and we could decide if we want to adopt it um, and, and just send it off with our sort of you know, support line. Kevin? I would, 
I think that's a great idea if you volunteered for that, but I wouldn't. I'm not so sure with the pace of um, the legislature um, if we want to wait to the next meeting or something. I don't yeah. know if it would be the type of thing we'd scoot it around and do an email poll or if you can do that. Do that. You can't do that. Do that. Okay. Just um, so. Maybe the purpose of our letter is really just to show the community, the students, and who are here that we do support this and that that's our position as a school board is that this is important to us. And so it doesn't, I don't think we think that it will impact really on what's going to happen maybe as quickly in the legislature, but the idea that we've <laughs> thought about it, we've talked about it, and we definitely stand behind these ideas might be just enough to have that general statement go up that we, that's important to us as a board. I forget. Um, the Allison's, oh, sorry. So I'd like to suggest that um, if we do go the route of proposing something and Krista does that, that there's some behind the scenes work going on so that she doesn't compose something, bring it to our next meeting, we have a conversation about it, there's some changes we want to make, those changes get made, and then at our next meeting we talk about it again. Um, kind of like how the communications committee, I'm not saying that you need to take this on, but um, there, there are people in the background working on it so that we have pretty much a finalized version at our next meeting. Um, Chris is a fairly intuitive person, so I, I think she can tell the, the direction that people would like to, to go and compose something. And I would think it would be something fairly broad, not, not those whereases that are specific, S140, you know, all of those things, but just a, a general statement to our community and students and everything saying that we recognize the situation and we want to um, acknowledge that and do what we can. But like you said, this is just going way too fast for us to keep coming back meeting after meeting after meeting, trying to come up with a resolution. Um, when I think it would be sufficient to have a short and sweet, um, concise, Statement. Steve. I was just thinking, um, I forget who the letter was to. The governor, the speaker, and the pro temp, Tim Ash, okay. so Mitzi Johnson, Tim Ash. So are we trying to actually send the same message to the same folks? So. Um, and it also copied all the local rep. Actually, not just the local representatives, but people on the related committees. SBA. Yeah, there are lots of folks. They did this in February, though, right? Yeah. yeah. So just making a general statement in this meeting and approving it as a recommendation isn't necessarily going to go to somebody. Okay. I just did briefly. I think maybe a little related to your point, Steve. Um, this has been such an intractable issue, and I don't think that we're here as a school board to to re-legislate or to legislate this issue at all but we all have points of view and perspectives on it. Um, but I do think that the action that has happened since February 19th when this was drafted is relatively unprecedented in Vermont. This has been a third rail for a long time that doesn't get touched. And so actually I think that uh, the point of who we're addressing this letter to, I think this is a real, a real call for, with some specificity, do something. This is urgent, and uh, as uh, you know, the school board. This is a, having a real uh, material impact um, on our schools and communities. And so, I think that maybe a more m maybe it is uh, having the communications group or community engagement group kind of talk about it because I think um, to be able to express support for the fact that I think more of a meaningful iterative process is taking place than we've seen in a while and kind of um, kind of what I think, though this has this particular resolution from Madison Central has specific requests, I think what I read in it is the bigger request is to start taking action and I think actually that's happened um, and is happening so I think maybe a more general uh, 
what's important to me is also just that there has been student action from this school, and uh, I think just saying that we support that conversation and we acknowledge the urgency that is um, spurring that conversation on to me is the core core statement that would be appropriate from this group rather to say here's our list of demands for what you must pass this legislative session and, and you better sign it. That might be appropriate for somebody, but I think that's not, um, doesn't feel exactly appropriate to, to me for this. So yeah, I think reworking it maybe for our next meeting and getting a little more general and, but at the core of it, acknowledging that this is a, this is really important and really impactful for our schools and all schools and that we're engaged in paying attention and, and supporting you know, our students who are also very engaged and paying attention. To me, that's the core part of it that I support. I'd just like to add that um, I think getting something out to, more than anything else, to our community and telling them we as a board are aware and we're concerned um, and we are resolved to not necessarily introduce legislation ourselves, but there's something that we can do. Because I'm remembering the woman who came to our um, informational meeting and asked us about what we were gonna do about gun violence in our schools. And it was like 13 days after Parkland had happened and we hadn't even had a chance to meet yet. And she just smeared and scoffed at us in anger about we didn't do anything. We hadn't done anything. Um, and we're at this point now where we're quite a few weeks removed and I think it would be a good idea to, there is a sense of urgency to this and I think we as a school do need to do something um, to address this. 13 days was not enough time. <laughs> Considering all of the other things we had going on at the same time, um, but now it would be a good time to address this and show our community that um, we are engaged and we acknowledge this and we know we realize this is happening. So do people want Krista to come back or something at the next meeting? Or like yeah, is that what you, or is it that Or do you want to send it off to the community engagement? I'm not sure that that falls under their job description no. though. I think Krista is really capable. If she's still fine doing it, sorry Krista. No, I'm fine. I wish there were a way. There isn't a way for people to just um, send an individual email with edits. Edits, is there? Uh, to me, there is one actually at a time has, that no, I don't have to, to. It has to come to me. But can they do that? Um, they could. Well, we did that when we did um, comments on the budget did questions process. and yeah. things like that. If you have individual edits that you'd like to send, send them to me in a singular email and then I will I will pass them along. I mean, similar to us making comments on monitoring reports or whatever, there's the form at the end, did you agree with this, was it clear, whatever, and that gets sent to you. I mean, right. mm -hmm. we could it take this document from, for and our could own. could I say those all came in in a week and then I produce something could you share it out and people could do that again? No. 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 Then it's no. a dialogue. Yeah. Then it becomes a, a okay. structure. Open dialogue. meeting then? Yeah. 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 But in the past, you know, I've seen boards have, it might be Krista and two other people, like yeah. it could be not just Krista so, doing it right. if you wanted to have, but you you can ask everyone. So either, either it has to be less than a quorum or it has to be warned. Okay. Well, it has to be warned anyway, as the VSBA said, anytime there's a meeting of board members, even if it's a quorum or not, there it has to be warned. That was that meeting, even if one person... One person goes to have their own meeting. I think if we give people the opportunity to write <laughs> Don an email... <laughs> give people the opportunity to write Don an email on this subject with whatever thoughts they'd like to see in the thing, and she can pass those on to Krista, and then... We'll look at the results next time. Yeah, if we get one round of edits out and you see generally where people tend to all congregate, I imagine we could have something that's close enough that if we bring our computers, we could have it okay. fixed in that's time. Good. So send individual emails to me about any comments you have on this subject. 
Do not copy anyone else. Okay. Just me. I'm wondering for clarity, Don. It is listed as an action item. If the action might be to table. I need a motion. Rebecca. I move to table this item while Krista is drafting the document for next meeting. All right. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor of t tabling this item until the next meeting, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Um, it's getting late, mm -hmm. and we are past our time, but we have a few more things to get through. Um, I'm willing to drop a few off the list for tonight, if, if that will make it easier for people. I'm kind of picking at E and F as dropping them off because they're discussion items. So if that's okay with everyone, we can move those to another meeting and just work through <coughs> C and D tonight. And Put those on though as discussion items, Don, because we have action coming at the next meeting? Um, not for, I don't, it's in our schedule, so the only thing is we'd be out of compliance with our work plan, which can happen, we just have to make a plan for how we're going to address it. So I don't think that it'll be stuff that has to take action at the next meeting. There's some action pending, I think, for the board to consider um, for both the racial angles of uh, bias training and the bond. So I would be inclined to see how efficiently we can move through the next three items because my gut says that they might go very quickly. Okay. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but <laughs> they might go quickly and we I might at that. least have a couple minutes okay. to be able Jennifer, to... Jennifer, I a motion coming my way. From I would be glad to make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> Seems All right. right. So let's, see. let's see how far we get then. All right, uh, on to item B. Uh, the act, it's an action item. It's to approve the superintendent's salary recommendation of 3% increase for employees not covered by the collective bargaining agreement or the director's policy. Jen. So moved. Second. Oh, second. yeah, look at that. Second. <laughs> 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 All right. Any discussion? Does that everybody understand? All right. All those in favor of improving the superintendent's salary recommendation of 3% increase for employees not covered by the collective bargaining agreement or the director's policy, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that one's passed. Next, action item to approve the superintendent's recommendation to renew contracts for administrators and other employees not covered by the collective bargaining agreement or director's policy whose contracts expire on June 30th, 2018. So Allison moves it. Is there a second? Second. Rebecca seconds. Any discussion? Caleb. Is the inclusion of the word administrators in C, whereas it's not in B, because all administrators were somehow covered in B? And I'm just wondering why it said, why, why B, we're kind of approving this for people who aren't covered in the CBA, and it just says for employees. And I'm wondering, is there a distinction for why under C it says for administrators and other employees? Why, why couldn't it just have said employees in both? It could have. It's the same group of folks. The only difference being, um, B really does um, apply to all folks not covered by the CBA or the director's policy, whereas C really is only talking about folks whose contracts are up for renewal, which is not everybody. So it's a so C is a subset of a group B. Any other questions? All those in favor of approving the superintendent's recommendation to renew contracts for administrators and other employees not covered by the collective bargaining agreement or director's policy whose contracts expire on June 30, 2018, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Hey, Don. Yes? You're going to tell me this just occurred in my mind that with everything that was going on with the consent agenda, we were supposed to revise the minutes. Is there any way to do that now that they've been approved? There is, but we'll have to do it. There's a way to do it, but you have to do it at the next, at the next meeting. At the next meeting, we'll have to do it. There's a way. I just can't tell you right off the top of my head. There is a way to do it. We, not <laughs> to work. There from here. Tell me which it's minutes. not just because I'm nitpicky. We didn't. Our minutes didn't have the reason that we went into executive session oh. last time, and.
and I had sent an email about it, but I it didn't get it. updated, and with everything else, I didn't right. think of it. So, yeah. and that's like one of those things you kind of have to have. Yeah. All right, we can. <laughs> Okay, so right. for fun next one. Okay. All right. Sorry, Don. Nope. You're on D. I'm on D. Um, that's uh, another going through the process to accept a monitoring report for 4.6 board committee structure. The interpretation was developed by the Policy and Governance Committee. It's been to the local boards, the executive committee just announced <laughs> our practice run. Rebecca. I move to accept it. All right, is there a second? Second. Steve, second. All right, all those in favor of accepting the monitoring report for 4.6 board committee structure, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, well, oh, look at that. We have a little time for discussion around uh, uh, an item on our work plan, which was racial and implicit bias training. Go. <laughs> I can start that one. So a while back, I think last year, we talked about uh, various trainings that, uh, that this board was interested in. Policy governance, uh, budget building, etc. We've done some of those trainings. We haven't set up a racial and implicit bias training. Um, it was scheduled for it to happen tonight. Um, as we've said a few times tonight, there's a lot going on right now, so I didn't take the steps to make that happen tonight. I wanted to re just acknowledge that that was slated for tonight, we're not doing it tonight, and ask, do we want to continue to pursue this? We'll have to find a different time, and um, I can actually try to operationalize this and get somebody in to provide that training. Okay. I wonder if it's something that could be scheduled if we're going to be doing a summer retreat. I know last year we did a lot of training at the summer retreat, so perhaps it would be something we could schedule in that block of time. Alice? I'm also wondering if the VSBA would be doing something around this site, uh, how they do their other trainings, um, so that people can sign up for it and do it. Um, it's been a key focus for the for the VSA and SBA in some recent years. I know last year there were a couple of trainings on traditional implicit bias down at Lake Mori. Uh, but it's, it might be something we could build into a retreat that Jennifer yeah. was saying. Just, the hard part is you know, we, we don't want to shortchange it if we're committed to getting the training and to add two hours to a two hour meeting to do the work that has to get done to get the training it gets complicated. Um, but in a retreat setting where we're there all day and we can allow for time for training, I don't think it's a bad idea. Mm -hmm. With the VSBA's help in putting it together. Yeah. Because I'm sure they have Liz, resources. I agree. I, I agree about that. Uh, I'd like to do it. And I also, uh, from the earlier conversation, feel pretty strongly that everybody should be trained in the negotiations work. Mm -hmm. Actually, as a board, all together, I kind of feel like we all should get that. I'd like some training on reading hours budgets myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I offer <often> people. <laughs> Jen. Can, can I request, can we get the link to the board work plan sent out? Because I was looking for it earlier, and I like I know it appears in agenda <laughs> from time to time, but I don't like bookmark it so <laughs> that I can refer to it. That would be great. Do you want that in a motion? No. Can they, can they put that up on the, uh, you know, or it has the board calendar on the supervisory website? School committees and boards, and it says the the board calendar, and then so, you could have the work plan. So if we're giving direction, <laughs> we should probably do it as a board, and that requires a motion. So we can just asked for it to get emailed. I'm first just curious if it can be done. Uh, so I make a motion to request that the board work plan be shared in electronic format and consideration be given to ways to make it easily accessible in the future. Is there a second? Second. I hope you got all that. Do you want me to try to say it again? No. Okay. All right. Any discussion? I like right. on the 
a link on the supervisor okay. website. No, no, we're seconding. Uh, Allison did. All those in favor of the board work plan being shared and electron or uh, uh, shared and uh, accessible in the future uh, on the website or in a, some other way, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Caleb. Um, given the time and the importance of the discussion of the bond, I, I would ask that maybe we put it off to a future meeting just because I think having a kind of quick conversation about it that everybody's rushing to get out of is maybe going to be less productive than having more time for it at a future meeting. It's just my take. Is that a motion to table it till the next meeting? I would move that we table the bond discussion until the next meeting. Is there a second? <laughs> Liz is seconding. Can you discuss a motion to table? Oh, wait. Uh, it wasn't an action item. I wonder if no, I just want to know, like, is the Mount A board, I'm assuming not, yeah, doing anything with the bond? I think the key you should let Patrick do yeah. some, at least tell us something so that we can. I can wet your whistle and then. <laughs> right, because right, you said you meant it. action, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, I have no problem with an announcement. <laughs> <laughs> Things to think about. Summer informational statements. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wait a minute. We've got a motion, though. So wait a minute. Do you want to retract that? I will retract that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's stuck in a grid over here and it's no. looking ugly. So yeah. I retract that. <laughs> Let's get her out of that vortex. <laughs> um, so quickly, the bond didn't pass. You probably knew that. <laughs> uh, Shoot. <laughs> so, so that means oh, next steps need to be considered. Uh, the Mountain Board has been the board that's been handling this so far. No action, um, at least in terms of a vote of the electorate, can take place until next November. I think it's, it doesn't make sense for the Mount A Board to be the one that continues the work. I think now it transitions to this board's responsibility to consider next steps for the bond. Um, that's the action that I think is pending, is you have to think about what's the action you want to take. Could we form another study committee? Could be enough, we've tried three times and it failed, we don't want to do it anymore, we'll just do a million bucks a year. Like there's a lot of options and they all have pros and cons. So I think that's work for this board to think about. Um, the reason why I think it's somewhat time sensitive is, so the earliest we can vote is next November uh, on election day, essentially. Um, there's been interest in in capitalizing on times when a lot of people are coming out to vote anyway to try and really understand the will of the electorate. Um, so to be able to do the study, get the information we need, um, really think about how do we communicate information, et cetera, ahead of a November vote, we probably can't start that in September. So that means this spring we'll need to know what is it we're gonna do, how are we gonna do it, who's gonna be involved in that, and get that process started, and it could mean some work over the summer in preparation for what's going to happen in the fall. Um, I think, obviously, we have the Mount Abraham High School facility to think about. As the MAUSD board, you now have all the facilities to be thinking about, which includes the central office, which we pay about $65,000 annually to, it's not just the rent, rent is a Mo almost all of that, but basically it's 65 grand a year to be where we are right now, and we don't own the place. That same amount of money in a bond could get us about a million bucks, a little over a million bucks. So, and, and the reason that's somewhat time sensitive is we have, I think, three years left on our lease, and as we understand it right now, the interest in the person we're leasing from would be for us to renew another 10 year lease when that three years is up. And our rent doesn't stay the same every year. Our rent increases every year by some amount. I don't know what the formula is or if there is a formula. Um, so personally, I don't think it's a great long-term investment to keep paying rent on property that we could be paying to own. Um, but that also is complicated and what do we do? And hard to predict five years from now what the educational climate's gonna be and, and, and how what's the next round of consolidation or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, so let alone 15 or 20 years. So there's some consideration there as well from a facilities perspective. And whether or not that's part of a bond, 
that takes care of that need as well as the high school need. And this is where the conversation started at Mount Abraham um, High School Board as well. And they ended up deciding not to go that route, but I think we need to go back to that, that conversation for this board to think about what makes sense in the long term. Kristen? Will we have ample time next time to work through that conversation of what we think we want to do because that so. seems like a very hefty conversation. This time last and month, I didn't know most of what ended up on our agenda tonight, so it, it okay. depends on what happens I mean, between it, now and then. And I'm just wondering if not, are we on a monthly cycle right now? We are. Would we consider a that's an additional meeting to discuss? Because it doesn't everything. seem like this could keep getting pushed off, but it also seems like it warrants a really thoughtful conversation not sandwiched between other things that might come up. Mm -hmm. We may get to the point where we need to meet every couple of weeks as things get closer and we have a longer list because there's only so much we can cram into a meeting. It makes it especially difficult when we're piggybacking meetings and we've got a ton of work and so it's a thought to consider. Kevin? So the t discussion is November. Um, the next big voter block would be essentially a year from now would be the next town meeting day as well. So I mean, there's I suppose there's that milestone if you will that could be worth going. Yeah. And the then, earliest it could go to the vote is November. And then I guess the other thing I don't quite understand um, coming coming from private industry, I always had a capital plan and an expense plan and every year you go and pitch for capital or investment money, which I guess is bond money in this case. So would there be, would it be um, something to think about to have, instead of going for like $30 million or 36, would you be going, could, could you go for like some incremental amount each year or does that just make things complicated or what's the thought there, process there? There's a lot of options. I think that's part of what this board needs to discuss is what's the right approach and, and what can we learn from past attempts that might influence the direction we take in the future. I think it'd be hard to get into that conversation tonight, given that we're trying not to go into depth tonight. That but will, but that, that is, <laughs> but that that is a consideration. There's nothing. That in a way, that's what we're doing now. Yeah. There's a million bucks in the budget for construction services at the high school. Um, Patrick, could you confirm exactly what 12 months? we're allowed to um, have another vote because the way I was reading the statute was you can, <laughs> you can only vote twice twice in a, in a 12 month period. Yeah. So we just voted March 6th. So to me, 12 months would be March 5th or well, 7th of right. next year. So which, which bond vote does that oh, hit us on? So, because it, so it's twice in a 12 month period, but um, so we voted in November and March, yep. and so as of uh, election day next November, we'll have been more than a year from the first vote. So now in terms of how many votes in that 12-month period, we're only at one, so we can add the second one in November. Then come town meeting day, this town meeting day's vote is in the previous 12 months. So we're now, we can then vote again the second time in a 12 month period, so. So we can vote twice a year. In yeah, November, twice March. in a 12 month period. Yeah. Yep. Uh, unless, and that wouldn't count any, so if there was a, if it was a close vote and it was recalled, or a, a contested and we had a re-vote, that doesn't count as one of the two. So technically you could vote, I guess, four times in a 12 month period if you have a re-vote. All the things you're learning being on the board, isn't it? <laughs> so I think the only thing we need to decide is whether we're going to talk about it just at our next regular meeting or if people feel like we need to have a special meeting, right? There was, so there was sort of some speculation about maybe having more stuff that we need for April. How is that decision going to get made? I think agenda planning is usually between the, the chair and the superintendent, yes. so we can take a look at what the next agenda is shaping up to be, and does it seem like there's sufficient time for a conversation, or do we really need to find another time? And are there relevant materials, you know, entering the board that I can just, you know, digest 
to so, prepare for So they're we're trying meeting. to plan a new board member orientation. <laughs> right. We need more responses to the doodle poll. So if you haven't responded, please respond to the doodle poll. About but why do we have to respond to it if we're not new members? Well, like, I don't if you, you are <coughs> more than welcome to continue to <laughs> attend board, new board member orientation. That's but if we're not planning to attend the new board member orientation, do we still need to respond to the doodle poll and say we're not planning to attend? No, yes. but it was, okay. yes. well, you can, but this open to everyone. But if I responded no, then is it going to look like they should pick a different day? Because lots of people are saying no. You can put in comments. Yes. Just put that up in the comments at the end. No, I just. Or it's just confusing because I'm not a new board member, right? So. But okay. But you could attend if you wanted to. Because <laughs> maybe you were on the board two years, and since we've never been in compliance with our board new board member orientation, you haven't had any. So maybe you come even though you've been on the board two years. I would love for other board members to attend the new board member orientation. In no way am I trying to discourage that. I just, I personally am not planning to attend. But were you yeah, asking specifically about renovation materials? Or yes, just, I mean, just as much information as about <laughs> the renovation. If you go on the ANESU <laughs> website, that you can see all the work of the Mountie Renovation Committee. Okay. And you can you can see that, and if you look deep enough, you may even be able to go back to 2014 and see I their was, information. That's what I was looking for at one point. And, for I, me. and I have that information. If you, have, and if you have questions, I was on the committee and okay. the communications committee, and I have not nearly as much information in my head as Patrick does, but you have a bit. Thank so you. Yeah. I'm willing to sit down with you and talk about it. Great. Thank you. All right, so that the bond will be back on our agenda when we do it. All right. Um, it does, can somebody with a computer open up the, the evaluation? Because I'm going to go. Sure you know, do is there any public comment at this time? I have a request. What's that? Can Steve. somebody study how to coin that thing? Oh my gosh, that's so loud. Yes, if you get, can we get, a, get one without glass doors. No, just get a, <laughs> an electronic timer to put on the floor. Oh, right. Our new central office board room person can be won't have a water fountain. <laughs> no. I mean, there's nothing perishable in that cooler. I love doing There is something perishable. There is? Yeah, some meals on, on the bottom, the bottom maybe. Kathy tells me we lose $60 worth of product. Huh. Yeah. So, so the other thing, thing is the small cafeteria is a little quieter. But it has its yeah, it has a water, water machine, too. Yeah. Yep, we can so. there. So, but it's not two things where you're constantly over the, over the turn. <laughs> we, we have a microphone that bought two years ago. Nobody uses it. <laughs> All right. Are you ready to do the survey? All right. If there's no public comment, we'll move on to the meeting evaluation. What was the level of engagement of all members, high or low? High. high. high.